Hey, it's Amy Newmark. I hope you're having a wonderful week between Christmas and New Year's. I'm playing some of my favorite episodes for you this week, and then I'll see you on Monday, January 2nd with some new material for the new year. Changing your life one story at a time. This is the Chicken Soup for the Soul podcast with Editor-in-Chief Amy Newmark. Hey, it's Amy Newmark with your daily dose of Chicken Soup for the Soul inspiration. It's Friend Friday, and that means that we're joined today by one of my very good friends, Kelly Sullivan Walden. Now, Kelly and I made a great book together, and it's a book I keep talking about in these podcasts because there are so many awesome stories in the book. It's Chicken Soup for the Soul dreams and premonitions. Kelly was my co-author. She taught me so much about dreams. She's one of the nation's experts on dreams. Kelly is a certified clinical hypnotherapist, and she has worked professionally with thousands of dreams and dreamers. She's written nine best-selling books about dreams. She's the founder of Dream Life Coach Training, and she's been on all kinds of national TV shows talking about dreams She also has a radio show every Friday on KKNW 1150. And you can also find Kelly on Twitter at Kelly S. Walden or on Facebook at Kelly Sullivan Walden Dr. Dream. And today we're going to talk about a particular aspect of the book that we made together. We're going to talk about how you can use your dreams to learn what your subconscious already know. So welcome, Kelly. Thank you, Amy. I love your podcast. It's so great to get to be on it with you. Well, I'm excited to have you. And one of the things that you taught me when we made the book together is that your subconscious knows so much about you. But because you're so busy being awake and filling your life with distractions during your waking life, you don't listen to what your subconscious is trying to tell you. And then when you're asleep, you're not distracted. And that's when your subconscious can give you these intense dreams that can actually be very instructive if you'll just listen to them. So let's talk about that. Exactly. Well, I love this statistic and, and who knows exactly if this is, this is perfectly correct, but according to the American hypnosis association, they say that our conscious mind, that's our logical mind. That's the mind that we use all day long to do all our social media and all our stuff all day. That's 12% of our mind's power. And our dreaming mind, our subconscious mind, is 88% of our mind's power. So this is where we get our dreams from, but also our, the premonitions, intuition, that sixth sense that, that gives us guidance and helps us connect to a higher power, higher sense of, of reality. And that's, it's most of who we are, yet normally in an ordinary day, we're not connected to that. We're just connected to the same oh, same oh, kind of our routine, and we can get so stressed about the little things. But sometimes these dreams come to us, so, and they come to us every night. We're always dreaming every night, three to nine, big dreams a night. But sometimes there's a dream that so much wants to get our attention that it makes, it gives us emotional impact so that we can't help but remember it in the morning. And when we do, it connects us to that larger wisdom, that that vast consciousness that, that is ours. It's already ours. It's not like it's connecting us to something that is weird or strange or outside of us, but it connects us with our own wisdom. And then if we can bridge the gap by remembering the dream and then doing something about the dream, taking action in our waking life towards the dream, then we will have closed the loop and in some ways connected that 12% to the 88%. And we have a tremendous aha moment that can truly change the entire course of our life for the better. And that's what our book is filled with, 101 stories. And we had so many to choose from. It was so hard to pick, but we do. it makes the case. It makes the case that our dreams are really telling us something important and we should all not take them lying down. So there was a story that you brought to us for the book from Mariah Reyes. And mm-hmm. it means a lot to me because Chicken Soup for the Soul is very involved in promoting anti-bullying behavior. We have a big proactive anti-bullying program rolling out in the schools. And so I was fascinated by the story from Mariah. It's called From Bully to Best Friend. 
And why don't you talk about what her dreams did for her? I love this story. So she is, um, she admitted that she had been a bully. And she actually said that before she become, became a bully, she had been bullied. And this is often the case. A victim of abuse becomes an abuser themselves. And so she, she became a tough girl. She's in the inner city of East Los Angeles, where I grew up, actually, too. I was kind of a little tough girl myself <laughs> on the outside. But then Mariah, she had this dream where she actually got to feel what it was like to be each of the people on the receiving end of her bullying. She got to feel the impact of her intimidating ways and her meanness. And that dream was so, so disturbing to her. She woke up in tears and she was so upset that she realized that something had to change. She realized that she could no longer take on this behavior. So she went about the business of slowly but surely making apologies to the people that she had harmed. And there was one girl in particular, Jasmine, who she had really bullied badly. And she apologized to Jasmine and Jasmine broke down in tears. She forgave her and they proceeded to have a very deep conversation about each other's lives. And they realized how similar they were, how similar their home situation was they became best friends and they are still best friends to this day. And that was several years ago. And that all happened because of a remembered dream that, that she took Mariah took action on. Well, that's great. And I know that she's very involved in helping children in general now. And she's, Oh yeah. She's very into public service. And then another dream that was in the book was from Reverend Michael Bernard Beckwith. And that, again, led him into becoming somebody who was of service to others. And that's another story that you went out and got for us because of your personal relationship with Dr. Beckwith. So let's talk about that one. So Michael Beckwith had a recurring dream that he was being chased by by gunmen. And he kept very cleverly escaping them and he would wake up before anything ever happened. But over the course of time, this recurring dream had it so that the men kept getting closer and closer and closer until one night they caught up to him and one man actually shot him in the chest and he and Reverend Michael, Michael Beckwith felt the, the blow in his chest. He felt the explosion. It was painful. He, he left his body, he died and he went into a place He was an agnostic, so he didn't call it heaven, but he called it love beauty. He said it was the most beautiful place he'd ever seen. He felt more love than he had ever felt in his life, and he felt like he was being given the answers to all the questions that he had ever had. And and when he woke up from that dream, he his life completely changed. He was on track to be um he was going to medical school. That was what he wanted to do. And he decided then to explore a spiritual path. And he began to study different religions and different spiritualities. And he became quite devout with this, with his practice and cut to present day. He, he started the Agape Spiritual Center, and it's now the biggest metaphysical community, spiritual community in the United States in, um, and maybe the world. I'm not exactly sure on that, but I mean, thousands and thousands of people attend his services three times a week. And it definitely wouldn't have gone that way had it not been for that dream. And one thing that I also love about that dream, because I hear this a lot, most people come to somebody like me when they have a disturbing dream. And this dream was both a, a dream where he died and it was a dream of being chased. And I tell people often that what's chasing us in dreams, though it seems menacing, often because Carl Jung would say that everyone in our dreams is an aspect of ourselves. It's an aspect of ourself trying to wake us up or trying to end a pattern in our life, trying to get our attention. And death in a dream is about a radical transformation, a change. We, we, if we die in a dream, it doesn't mean we die in real life. It doesn't have to be a bad thing. In fact, as is the case in Michael Beckwith's dream in our Dreams and Premonitions book, it was the best thing that ever happened to him. Well, that's great. And then we also... In our book, we had some stories where someone's subconscious helped them, not with a hugely life-changing event, but with something that had a more practical aspect. And I did talk about one of those dreams in the podcast on March 21st when I talked about Christy Woods 
Mm. who realized that she was <laughs> lactose intolerant as a result of her dream. And we can talk about that. And then I know you also really love the story from your friend, Jenny Gentry. Yes. Well, I love Christy Wood's dream about the uh, about the police officer pulling her over, giving her a breathalyzer test and telling her, yes, you most definitely are lactose intolerant. And all those mysterious symptoms that she had never quite been able to figure out the cause of went away after she eliminated lactose from her diet. And that wouldn't have come to her so clearly had it not been for a dream or it was her subconscious telling her what what she knew, but she wasn't accessing. And then Ginny Gentry, I love this dream, and I love the story. It's so beautifully written. She she talks about how she fo- she followed her her waking dream to live in the Santa Fe desert, and she goes through a long he- hero's journey to get there. And she finds this beautiful property that she absolutely loves with her whole heart. And there's this little what she calls a seep in terms of the water supply. It's very tiny and little, and it's enough to get by. But after a while, the seep starts to diminish to more like a drip. And she knows that she won't be able to survive out there with with no water. And she asks very deliberately. And and I know Ginny, and she says that she's not a dreamer. She doesn't regularly remember dreams. But on this particular night, she was so desperate. She she called out to God, the universe, whoever was listening, please help me. I need a solution here. And that night, um, actually in the morning before she woke up, the last dream she had upon awakening was a dream that she very clearly, vividly was shown a place on her property. And this is many acres, a place where if she drilled in this place, there would be water. And it came together where the drill finally came out and and she had to live for a trip. So she just left the guy there and she was so sure that the water was going to be there that she let the drill, the guy drill. And sure enough, when she came back from her trip, she said it was a, they had hit an artesian well. And now there's, I think she says that she gets over 100 or 500 gallons a minute. When people ask me if there's any practical reasons for paying attention to dreams, as if dreams were a, a folly of people that had nothing better to do than eat bonbons all day, I tell them your dreams can save you so much time and energy and money and can help you to actually find, hit pay dirt or pay water, as the case may be. I love that story. I had to drill a new well on my property and I had to follow my town's rules and they specified (laughs) the exact square foot where I was allowed to drill my new well. And that was the only place they would let me drill on my two acres. And I hit an aquifer, 25 (gasps) 25 gallons a minute, not not hundreds, but it was still quite a thrill. Wow. So it came to me through the uh, zoning and permit process. <laughs> well, you much. are a lucky lady. It's all the good karma points you've accrued over all the time you've been doing all these chicken I've, soup I stories. Followed the, I there. followed the rules. What can I say? I actually followed the rules of the zoning people in my town. Well, <laughs> it was great talking to you today, Kelly, and I'm sure we'll have you back on to talk about other aspects of dreams. And I want you guys to know that Kelly has a new book out. Of course, her favorite is still Chicken Soup for the Soul, Dreams and Premonitions, but she can't stop writing books. And her new one is called The Love, Sex, and Relationship Dream Dictionary, Your Guide to Over 1,000 Common Dream Symbols About Your Romantic Life. So that should be a lot of fun to read. And I want to thank you, Kelly, for joining me today. I'm so happy to have you as part of the Chicken Soup for the Soul family, and I look forward to doing more things with you. Thank you, Amy. This journey was so magical. It was so affirming, life-affirming to get to read so many stories. And now I got one little glimpse into what your life is like. You do this all the time. It's such a beautiful service, and we all need to be reminded that there's something larger than than just the day-to-day little nuances and, and minutia of our, of our ordinary life, that there's a big, beautiful universe that we live in, and it really has our best interest at heart, and our dreams help us to, to connect with that. So thank you for the privilege of getting to co-author this book, Dreams and Premonitions, with you. It was a dream come true. Well, thank you. And if you want to read some useful tips from the book that Kelly and I made, Chicken Soup for the Soul, Dreams and Premonitions, please go to our website, chickensoup.com. I'm Amy Newmark. Thank you for listening. The next time we get together on Monday, we're going to talk about something very practical, decluttering your life.